This video is brought to you by Tom Talk. Now in case you're wondering what's the purpose of all So after nearly half a million views, it is clear to me that you're all super interested in my ultimate home screen series. As I expected after my latest iPhone episode, comments like these started coming in, bringing my attention to applying similar organizational principles to my iPad. So don't worry, I've heard you. In this episode, I'll take you on a tour of my thoughtfully curated and most of all smart iPad setup showcasing my organization principles alongside some cool apps, widgets and creative workarounds. As always, the purpose here is to inspire and give you some ideas as to how you can organize your iPad regardless if you rock the latest generation 11 inch M4 iPad Pro the 13 inch or any of the older models. Hardware is not a determining factor. In fact, if there is a determining factor, it will be the concept of having everything organized under one single home screen. No need to swipe between endless pages of apps, but instead use purposeful app placement combined with useful widgets and stacks of such. And while at it, maybe have some fun with some color coordination. There are a few things to consider here. All of them optional of course. As a widget widget aficionado and a creator, I take full advantage of this app to tailor everything to my taste like my little entertainment section which I'll show you how you can create yourself down the line. Next, the iPad might look perfectly organized in horizontal mode only to turn it into chaos once you rotate it. But fear not, simply enter jiggle mode in that secondary position and reorganize your screen in both orientations to stay sane. Finally, I'm taking advantage of a few shortcuts that I'll definitely go over, but before that let me show you the proudest shortcut and automation combo that I came up with. For me, the iPad serves two purposes. Aside from being a tablet, it is also an extension of my Mac and I use it in continuity mode or to extend my Mac display and this is where I actually charge it. So here's what I came up with. As soon as I place my iPad in the desk setup and plug it in to charge it, look what happens. I have a totally different home screen layout based on the way that I work on the Mac. So I have a giant clock, I have my calculator on the fly, quick access to Notion, my emails and so forth. And this is great because I can just move my mouse and continue working on the iPad like this or just extend it to the Mac. Now if I unplug it, it takes a second but it goes back to the home screen that it was and it actually changes the wallpaper as well which is very nice. Now if you want to do the same thing yourself, I'll create a step-by-step -step guide towards the end of the video so feel free to stick around. Okay, so let me give you an overview and explanation as to why everything is what it is and its placement starting with the lock screen. Things here are super simple and very much default. Aside from the slightly customized clock, I'm taking advantage of the default iPad OS calendar and weather widgets to stack four sections together, giving this bold head of mine an easy glance at the current date, month, current temperature, and what to expect in the next few days. Nothing special, aside maybe from the wallpaper pair that I've chosen, which regular viewers might recognize as grayscale tides. I am using the light version of the wallpaper pack on the outside and the same dark variation on the inside as I am more of a dark mode kind of guy. By the way, I am trying to achieve a channel milestone and hit 300,000 subscribers by the end of this year, which is very much possible with your help. So subscribe, because why not? Continuing with the dock, I've disabled app suggestions from settings as I always know what I need to keep there and refer to at all times. Few examples that I can give you are some key players for the iPad, settings, files and my password manager. These are all apps that I might want to drag into split screen or slide over at any point, especially when creating a login or simply dragging an image into an image editing app. My Redbubble folder is of course present and it follows the same principles as always. All social media and IM notifications are off aside from iMessage. Should I see a Redbubble there and not hear this sound, I should refer to that folder at my own discretion and not be bothered about it. A little caveat here are the browser versions of Instagram and threads which do not exist as iPad apps even 
in 2024. To create a web app of something like Threads or Instagram, all you have to do is open Safari and from the share icon, you can scroll down to add to home screen. So once you tap on that, you can choose a name and just click on add. And now you have a browser version of the same app, which looks much better on the iPad. With all that said, you might notice that I don't use Stage Manager, especially when we talk about the smaller variant of the iPad. In my opinion, things do get very messy and most of all cramped when we talk about this smaller size. By the way, if you're using the latest generation 11-inch M4 iPad Pro, you should definitely check out Tom Tuck's Inspire Pivot Case, which screams reliability. This is achieved by following two key features. First and foremost, exceptional protection. This case is military drop tested and approved, providing all around security. Think of it as wrapping the iPad in a spacesuit. The camera lens is safely cocooned too, so is the recess cover, which enhances the screen preservation. There is even a dedicated pencil holder space for perhaps the safest pencil charging. Second, there is the stand. It offers an infinitely adjustable pivot, making it easy to find your ideal position. Whether you're working or drawing with a case on your lap, it's hands down the sturdiest option I've tested. On a desk or table, it is just as versatile for writing, video calls or even vertical viewing for those favorite video formats. So if you want to keep your 11-inch M4 iPad Pro protected while unlocking its full potential, check out TomTalk Inspire Pivot Case in the first link in the description below. Okay. So so going forward by columns, the left column is very much widget oriented. On the top, I've placed a widget called HUD panel, which is a new addition to my store. Out of all the widgets, this is perhaps the one that I'm most excited about because look at this skeuomorphic goodness. It provides all the data one might require. The home screen gives me the current time, date and outside conditions. And if I tap on the buttons on the right, I can move around other screens such as detailed forecast, calendar and events, and even health. If you like this widget and you want to support the channel, this is perhaps the best way to do so. So feel free to tap on the card above or down below. This being a stacked section, of course, I can't skip on my favorite MD calculator app underneath. Very similar to my ultimate iPhone home screen episode, which I'll link at the end of this one, I can simply toggle between the HUD panel and the calc when in a pinch to add some numbers. The MD calculator is of course customized to match the aesthetics of this setup. And as you might've noticed, I've also placed it as a quick solution on my plug the iPad into my setup focus mode. Moving down the line, I have another set of this time medium widgets. Perhaps the most unique one is my entertainment widget, which is based on my mini drawer, but in a slightly larger size. Instead of simply putting my streaming apps into a folder, I decided to tie them into a widget, which I can spice up visually and add some flair like popcorn in the background. If you want to create the exact same widget, but tailored for yourself, be sure to check out my Sunday's newsletter, where I'll release a step-by-step -step guide to do exactly that. Truth be told, another reason I created this entertainment widget is to hide my email widget, because who wants to check their email all the time. I have enabled Smart Rotate for this stack, by the way, because I've noticed iOS is kind of smart enough to toggle the widgets should I receive a new email. This is not, however, the case for the large stack up top. It's just a manual swipe. In case you're wondering, my email app of choice is Hey, which is not just a app, but rather an entire service. It's pretty cool. Last but not least, in column one, on the bottom, there's a single shortcuts widget, which holds four of my most used iPad shortcuts. The first one is very simple. Any place NPR radio via Apple's podcasts. No subscription necessary. Even though I'm not much into politics, I like to play NPR every once in a while in the background while doing some mundane stuff. The second shortcut opens ChatGPT voice, ready to assist me on the wildest of queries. What do you call an alligator in a vest? An investigator, Holmes. <laughs> the third shortcut plays white noise, which is something I rely on a lot, believe it or not. And last but not least is AirPlay, which I share a step-by-step -step guide on how to create in a previous episode, which I'll link below. By tapping AirPlay, I can easily choose 
where I want to broadcast whatever I'm listening to. For example, a HomePod. So column two starts with four Notion page templates. Despite having access to the Notion app from the dock, I'd rather have a quick and easy access to my daily Notion pages directly. My notes page is a great example of that as I often refer to it should I decide to write something down. Same goes for video topics. So when an idea strikes, there's almost no friction. In case you're wondering, the reason I keep Notion in the dock is more for split screen reasons, as this is a scenario I most often resort to if I want to write and do some research. Since this is an iPad and it has a lot more real estate than an iPhone, I took the liberty to fill up some empty space on the screen with some educational stuff. And for that, I've placed a stack of Wikipedia widgets. The first widget is picture of the day, and it shows a daily photo selected by the community. For example, I can check out the Christmas lights in Paris in 2020, because why not? The second stacked Wikipedia widget shows something called On This Day, a section that explores what happened on this day in history. So if I tap on what happened on that day today, I can read about the Space Shuttle Endeavor and what happened 23 years ago. But if I go back and tap on the date, I can see an entire list of events that has taken place on that same date. The last column of the iPad screen is pretty much reserved for my most used apps, which of course I had to somehow color coordinate. These are for the most part self-explanatory, aside maybe from Tripsy, which is a new app for me and one that I'm actually very impressed by. This is a travel planner and a guide app which I plan to use on my upcoming Las Vegas trip for CES. With it, I can create my trip and input all my relevant information such as flight numbers and their times and dates, lodging and accommodation and more. On the left side where the iPad widgets page lives, I've placed only two widgets I can say I care about. Widget number one is my YouTube music widget which I wish I could find a record player for as I've done in the past and below it, I have a large inner reader widget. If you've never heard of inner reader, I strongly suggest giving it a try as you have the power to build your own news feed by following your favorite websites, social media feeds, podcasts, blogs, and even newsletters. I can save articles for later, discover insights to share and stay updated on my own terms. Okay, so here's how you can set up your iPad to change once you plug it to a charger. There are three aspects of this that we should keep in mind here. First of all, we need to create two shortcuts. One shortcut turns on do not disturb and the second shortcut turns it off. Second, we need to create two automations. Automation one triggers shortcut one once the iPad is connected to a power source and automation two does the opposite. When disconnected, it turns off do not disturb. In addition, we need to have two home screens created. So let's start with that. I will not show you how you can create your own home screen because that's very much self-explanatory. In my case, if I hold to enter jiggle mode and I reveal my home screens, you can see that I have two. The one that I use on a daily basis and the second one that shows up once I connect the iPad to my power source. First things first, I'll open settings and I'll go to focus modes. And it could be any focus mode, but in my case, it's do not disturb. I will open do not disturb and I will say that once do not disturb is enabled, I will choose to see a different home screen. So I'll choose this one. And then to spice things up, I want to have a different wallpaper. So I will select from one of my existing wallpapers that I've applied. It could be any one of those. Now, if I exit, as you can see, I see currently this screen. The other one is hidden because do not disturb is active. If I turn that off, nothing happens, but I see now my main home screen. So all I have to do at this point is hide when do not disturb is turned off, hide this second screen and that's it that's all I have just to test it I will turn on focus mode boom it changes however you might have noticed that the wallpaper did not change so let's go ahead and troubleshoot and apparently iPad OS is a little bit buggy but 
I realized that the home screen that I chose, either this one or this one, has a light version outside and a dark version up on the inside. So I need to change, I need to pick one that has a lighter version or the same version on the, on the outside and on the inside. So I'll choose this one, tap here and you'll notice that my wallpaper will change here as well. Now, as you can see, it is buggy because it's not showing the icons, it's weird. But I guess it's iPad OS. So let's see. Hmm. It does not work. Okay, came back. Let's try to turn it off and on again. Boom. Yeah, that worked. So, you know, iPad OS is a little bit iffy, but if you play around, uh, that should easily work. As you can see, it's not showing the icons again, but that's okay. Now, if you want to double check why the wallpaper is not changing here, you can go to your wallpapers and customize your home screens to make sure that you have the desired wallpaper on lock screen and the desired one once you pull up the iPad. With that out of the way, we are one step closer. I will turn off, do not disturb at this point, go back to my regular home screen, and from here, I will start creating the shortcuts. So the first shortcut that I will create is, actually, I'm just gonna look for that here, focus, set, focus. So I will say, turn, do not disturb on until it's turned off. You can rename the shortcut to, let's say, D and D, do not disturb, on done now we need to create the opposite shortcut which is just a simple turn do not disturb off i'll just rename it done go back so we have do not disturb on and do not disturb off we can test this simply do not disturb is on as you can see here and now if we tap on do not disturb off do not disturb is off so these shortcuts work we are all set now let's create the automations go to automation tap on plus sign look for charger tap on here so when the ipad is connected to the power run the automation immediately no need to confirm also no need to notify me when i run it so tap next and just find your automation do not disturb on tap again look for charger and when the iPad is disconnected do not disturb turns off and with that we are pretty much done now you can spice things up even more by going back to the shortcuts and say that when do not disturb is turned on true tone of the iPad to be turned off when I have the iPad connected to my desk setup, I want to make sure I see the colors as they are. I don't want to, you know, see warmer or cooler colors depending on the lighting conditions around me. We can go back to to not disturb turn off. Oops. Get inside and do the opposite and set true tone to on once do not disturb is turned off. And voila. If you enjoyed this video, then you should definitely check out my ultimate iPhone home screen episode right here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.